Anime. Today I am reviewing the anime Yuki Yuna is a Hero. It might be something different in Japanese, but I only know the English version because I watched this on Crunchyroll. Now the anime starts out, and I a little confusingly, I was from like the first four fifths of the first episode, I was 100% convinced that this was a slice of life anime. Um, and basically it's about this girl named Yuki Yuna and she is part of this club at school called the Heroes Club. And as far as she knows, the Heroes Club are, is a group of girls that are, um, neighborhood heroes. They put on, they open up, they're putting on a puppet show for children, you know, to, just just to help out. Um, another one is to help find homes for lost st or stray abandoned kittens. Stuff like that. And it kind of just goes on about how, what the meaning of being a hero is. Until probably close to the end, where the world just kind of stops and they all get transported to this alternate dimension and it's beautiful there it's just it's crazy beautiful um, and before they're transported they get a notification on their phone that says that the vertexes are coming and I mean hello that's confusing you just get a rando text message whenever time stops that the vertexes are coming and also they're the only ones that time stopping does not affect but they are transported to this other world called the Jukai and it's a barrier between um, the real world and the world of the Shinzu-sama and I don't know what the Shinzu-sama is um, because I'm not a hundred percent up on my Japanese culture uh, so I'm assuming that the Shinzu-sama Shinzu is like the Americans God I'm not Americans Christians God um, and, but maybe not so much like the all-powerful ruler. Um, the feeling that I got from the Shinji-sama is that it is the the, the all-powerful god, but it's it's not the god that sets down laws and you have to follow them. It's like the all-encompassing power of the earth is kind of what I got from the Shinji-sama. So if anybody knows what a Shinji, what the Shinji-sama is, Shinji-sama, Shinji, I'm whatever, whatever that is please let me know because I'm actually very curious about it. So you find out that these girls, the reason that they're transported to this other world is to become heroes of um, the Jukai and what they have to do is they have to defeat all the vertexes and there are 12 vertexes. Uh, they have to defeat all the vertexes before they reach the Shinju-sama and basically because when they reach the Shinju-sama um, the world just ends and they don't really delve into um, what happens when the world ends but it's just understood that the world will end if they ever reach the Shinju-sama so they have to fight um, the vertexes to prevent them from getting to the Shinju-sama and they are recruited by this council that kind of just seems like the council of the Shinju-sama and they're kind of in charge of selecting the heroes and they are called the Taisha and they're the ones that kind of communicate with the girls which adds a very interesting aspect where the girls this is a magical girl anime in case you hadn't quite gotten this yet and in most typical um, magical girl animes they magically get magic powers hence magical girl um, but they also kind of have um, like an, an animal, I don't know, confidant, somebody to kind of show them the ropes. While they do have animals, they're more of just spirits that kind of just hang around in the air, but they don't give them guidance. So the guidance role is taken on by the Taisha, and they communicate with them via their cell phones. So it's kind of a very interesting aspect how they add the technology in with it and use the technology as a replacement for the animal guide which is kind of actually very cool and I really enjoyed that because um, it added to the mystery of the Taisha which 
I don't know, I just really enjoyed. Now this might be kind of spoiler-y, but not really. Um, from the very beginning of this anime, you kind of get the feeling that this is going to be a darker style magical girl anime. And you eventually find out that the girls, they are able to take on this more accelerated form called Munkai. Um, I think which means blooming in Japanese, um, but they can take on the monkai form and they just kind of like erupt in this t like crazy power mode. Um, and then they can kick ass basically. But then you find out that every time they take on this monkai mode, they lose a physical ability. Um, like one of them loses sight in one eye, the other one loses her voice. Um, very kind of small things, but they start they start deteriorating physically every single time they take on Munkai form and it's kind of it gets a little bit darker and there's a very strong struggle between, you know, do we still do what is right and defeat these vertexes when we know we have to take on Munkai form to defeat the vertexes? Or do we concern ourselves with our own physical well-being and not take on Munkai form and then let the world possibly end? And it's a very, uh, it's a very enriching, not enriching, um, you get really sucked into that battle, the internal battle and even external and verbal battle between the girls and within the girls too. And it's just very interesting and I really, really liked that. And then because of that, kind of towards the end, they all start going a little batshit crazy, uh, which is very interesting to see. And, you know, and it, one girl just says, F you all, I'm going to, like, do something terrible. And cause she just goes cray because all of these things are happening and they're just so lost. And I really liked that aspect of the anime because if you were in the same position, while one of the characters is always like, no, we're a hero, we do what's right, even if that means destroying our bodies. No, no one's gonna say that. Nobody is going to say that. And I really, really enjoy the kind of not only physical deterioration, which I don't really enjoy, I don't enjoy watching girl, like young anime girls physically deteriorate, but the mental deterioration that kind of goes along with that inevitable physical deterioration, it's just very realistic and I very much enjoyed that. The animation of this anime is wonderful. It is very bright, very colorful, and the world that they go to is just like cotton candy wonderland. Um, it's psychedelic colors everywhere and just very odd. It's kind of like a bunch of large trees and like a lot of large roots and branches growing out of the ground and is very different from our world. It is kind of reminiscent of the world of Madoka Magica, but not nearly as trippy or Alice in Wonderlandy or like creepy or scary because the world in Yuki Yuna as a hero is very soft and it does a very, it does a much better job of kind of hiding that there is a darker side to this magical girl world because it is just so welcoming and so inviting because it's so bright and colorful. The music in this is also wonderful. It all is also very reminiscent of Madoka Magica, where a lot of the, the songs are very like choiry, um, with just a lot of operatic sounds coming out. I'm sure they're saying something in Japanese, but I don't know what they're saying, so it just sounds like a a lot of 50 part harmonic awe this, this kind of thing. Um, but I really, really liked it. it. It added a lot to the fight scenes that they had, uh, which it was I enjoyed. Another thing with the animation is the girls look very typical anime-y. So it kind of tricks you into thinking that this is going to be a slice of life anime. Adding on to the animation factor, the animation and the appearance of the girls, it is very typical young cutesy girl moe, not completely moe, but very normal girl looking animes. And it does kind of trick you into thinking that it's going to be a slice of life anime, even though it's not. Um, so then there are slice of life aspects to it. I'm not going to lie and say that, you know, every episode is action packed. There are some slice of life animes, but the writers did an excellent job, in my opinion, of 
using those probably filler slice of life episodes and using lessons learned and interests learned and troubles of that episode they did a really great job of pulling that back into the magical girl plot to kind of add to the struggles of the girls and it was very very realistic you know if you're if you become a magical girl your real life doesn't just go away so all of these troubles and anxieties of a typical middle school girl they still carry over to this other life that you're living and i think that was a very smart way of putting that all together and making it seem a lot more realistic because you're not going to have action every single day probably and you're going to have a real life day where you have to worry and you know, worry about these real life things and fulfill this real life role. And I just think it was a very, very smart idea. Um, they just, they, l let me just say, they worked their filler episodes very, very, very well. Now I keep mentioning Madoka Magica because I can't help but watch a deconstructed Magical Girl anime and not be reminded of Madoka Magica because Madoka Magica, I think, I don't think it was necessarily the flagship of the deconstructed uh, Magical Girl anime genre, but it is probably the most well-known uh, anime in that genre. And I have to think or I have to always compare any deconstructed Magical Girl anime to Madoka Magica because that's the first one I saw and I thought Madoka Magica was very well done. Now, with that being said, I think some of the themes and development of the characters and the combination of their real lives versus their Magical Girl lives, I think that that was done excellently. Um, and I really, really liked how at the end, more than one character went batshit cray. <laughs> they didn't go all go, they didn't go batshit, but they, they lost their, they lost their mission at some point. And in Madoka Magica, only, I feel like only one girl really lost their mission entirely. Um, or started, she just went crazy, if you have not seen Madoka Magica. But at the same time, it's the same sort of thing. You basically sell your soul. While there is no direct wording of soul selling in Yuki Yuna, you're selling your soul. You're selling your mental and physical well-being to this mysterious entity just to fight and protect it. The twist I did not think was as crazy or as good as Madoka Magica because there's a couple twists in Madoka Magica. Um, if you've not seen Madoka Magica, I keep mentioning it, but basically these magical girls sell their souls to this little adorable white cat fox dog looking thing, but he is a dick, um, in order to fight witches. And there's twists involving, you know, what the selling of their soul means and what the fighting of the witches means. And they have individual powers and what the repercussions of having those individual powers mean. And just all those things. So I think that the twist was not as good. I think that they were trying to be original and not directly copy Madoka Magica. Um, but in that, they didn't have as good of an idea as the Madoka Magica had. Uh, but that's not to say that this anime was not good for a deconstructed magical girl anime. Now with that, I don't want to say that resembling another anime is a bad thing because I have seen multiple harem animes. I have seen multiple Sailor Moon-like magical girl animes. What else? Um, magical school animes. You know, all of those. They've all been done before and they all are original. Um, but I think because the deconstructed magical girl anime genre is so new, um, you're going to constantly be comparing it to a better and earlier version of the deconstructed Magical Girl anime. Um, but that's not to say that this is bad. It has been done before, but what anime genre hasn't been done before? That's why it turns into a genre, because it's done over and over and over again because it works and people love it. Now this anime is definitely not bad. It is a good anime. But because it is so similar to Madoka Magica, I keep finding myself comparing this to that. And and this is not necessarily as good as that. Um, so I kind of had a very difficult time just trying to independently judge Yuki Yuna is a hero for what it is and just for what it is without comparing it to another anime. Um, so I tried really, really hard to have that thought process 
while I was trying to figure out what I, how I wanted to rate this anime, and I think I'm definitely going to rate it as a premiere ball. Um, I think Madoka Magica is a master ball for the deconstructed anime, magical, magical girl anime. I'm surprised I haven't messed that up yet. Um, but I think Madoka Magica is a master ball, and this is just slightly not as good. So it's, de but it's definitely good. It's still above average. So I'm definitely going to continue and I'm going to give this a premiere ball and I'm going to recommend that you watch this with the condition as somebody who did this you have to promise me that if you're going to watch this and you have seen Madoka Magica you are going to try your darndest not to compare Yuki Yuna is a hero to Madoka Magica because I think Yuki Yuna is a hero does deserve to have your own opinion for what it is and not as compared to Madoka Magica. So that's my review of Yuki Yuna is a Hero. I enjoyed it. If you watched it, let me know what you think. And thank you for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!